Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs. Armor stands. I'm a big fan, as you probably know, and there are still things I'm learning about these. For example, until yesterday, I thought an armor stand could only be broken by player contact. And that is actually not the case. I've discovered yesterday, pretty much, and apologies if people already know this, but it was a little bit of a conundrum to me because armor stands cannot be broken in a lot of the usual ways you can find entities breaking. For example, cactus destroys most items, not armor stands. Crushing stuff occasionally works for things like leaves and so forth. You can push a armor stand into a cactus with a piston and it won't break. So that's out of the window for a start. Throw snowballs at them all you like, you're going to have to do that at a distance because if you get up close it thinks you're trying to apply a snowball to the armor stand and it won't let you. Still doesn't do anything. Throw a splash potion of harming at it. No breaking armor stands. If you set fire to it then obviously it will get set on fire because it's made of wood, but then it will just disappear and it won't drop itself. And that is pretty much useless. And then yesterday, I put one in front of a dispenser, loaded it full of arrows and broke it. And my world changed for the better. So today I am presenting to you a design for a compact armor stand breaker. That's pretty much what I'm calling it right now. All you need to do is dig a hole, put a dispenser in there, load it chock full of arrows. You'll only be able to use it a maximum of 572 times or something like that. So obviously it's got a limited lifespan, but stock it full of arrows and you'll be good for a while. Add a hopper on top of that. The hopper can be directed outward into a chest if you want it to collect the armor stands, but just add a stone pressure plate on top and the stone here is very important. I'll explain why in a second. But if you drop the armor stand on top of that now, it's going to break, it's going to end up in the hopper and obviously the problem here is that the pressure plate is sending a redstone signal to the hopper, which is going to lock it temporarily. And the reason you can't have other types of pressure plates on there is because the dropped armor stand entity will activate the pressure plate, but with stone, it's only activated by players or, in this case, armor stands. You're going to want to put a boundary of blocks around the outside of this because, for example, I will take this away. I got lucky that first time, but if I show you again, the locked hopper means that the armor stand will kind of bounce away because entities tend to react weirdly when it comes to locked hoppers. They don't just float around on top. They tend to sort of, sort of ping away like that. And that one even dropped like with an armor stand still in the in the hopper slot. So I have absolutely no idea what went on there. But yeah, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit glitchy here and there. But if you surround it completely with blocks, then you should be able to drop it on there. No problem. It'll break, and that one ended up in my inventory, but the rest of them will end up... Why is it duplicating? That's really weird. Anyway, it should end up in the hopper, and that means that my previous armor stand key door design was rendered completely obsolete, because that involved a minecart picking it up, and had like rails, and kind of the armor stand came back to you on a water course. No longer needs to happen. In this case, all you need to do is drop it onto the pressure plate there, have hoppers to collect it in this chest here, and as you can see, it came through there. Just run a redstone repeater into a block next to a redstone torch and have that activate the two pistons that are going to be your sliding door and that is a brand new armor stand key door design that took me all of about five seconds to build and now I know you're asking Pix what has this done to the machine and you would be correct to ask that because what I wanted to do this time around is create something that destroyed the armor stand in one place to create the illusion that it set up another armor stand over here with completely different armor so it's like the, uh, the armor stand has gone from having like gold plated armor to diamond plated armor hence the weird design I've done on the front of this so now if we run this through the machine the first part works pretty much the same as it did last time. Adds gold armor to the armor stand. It gets propelled up into this watercourse. I've done a little bit of decoration around the outside. And then it drops into here and watch what happens. We get a diamond armor stand on the way out. So what's happening here is actually kind of an illusion. If you get this one set up with gold armor and run it through the watercourse, it will end up being broken by an armor stand breaker down here. And that will send all of the armor and the armor stand into that chest over here. Meanwhile, another armor stand set up here gets diamond armor attached to it and runs down the watercourse over here. So it looks like the same armor stand has made the entire trip when in fact it's a different armor stand entirely, but it gets broken each time so you're never losing any ingredients and that I think is absolutely fantastic. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name has been Pixorifs. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build the pipe organ that I built in the Drowned Abbey on my latest episode of Decidedly Vanilla. And here it is in creative mode. Despite this being quite a large build, it's actually pretty simple. All you'll need is the right materials, and they're in the chest down here. So to start off, you'll need at least.